job figures out this morning are higher than expectations, signaling an increasingly tough job market. For more on that and other news coming out of our nation's capital, Republican Congressman Brian Bilbray of California joins me right now. Congressman, good to see you. Nice to see you, Alexis. All right, first your reaction, these continuing claims numbers hitting new highs once again definitely means we've got some issues in the job market. What's your reaction? Okay, very bleak. And, you know, got to remember that this is not only a, a major hit there, but you got to consider that uh, the federal government just hired 72,000 employees. So you've got to, you know, that's an artificial bump down. So you actually have to add those in if you really want to look at private sector foundation. And so it's a, a real crisis, especially for those of us who are looking at the budget. Because remember, the new administration has projected in their budget an 8% unemployment rate. Well, that doesn't wash anymore, and that's has to revi revise all of our projections of what is really practical when we talk about revenues in the next, next couple years. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, uh, Congressman, your state has been hit exceptionally hard, as has been the Rust Belt area, you know, some projecting 10 percent at a minimum. What do we do now, though, to create those new jobs? Because this administration initially was saying they could create or save three, three and a half million jobs. I don't see where the job growth is coming from. And I don't know if this fiscal stimulus at one and a half million jobs, they say, by the end of the year is going to do it. Alexis, the problem is, is that we've got to recognize there's an institutional problem with the fact that Washington has not addressed the major concern, and that is you can't operate a modern um, uh, economy with energy costing more than labor. And we haven't had an energy policy, a real energy policy, for over 30 years. And while we're all talking about the, the uh, challenges of the economy and climate, but we're not willing to be brave enough to talk about stuff like what is the federal government doing about doubling nuclear power within the next decade, which is very cost effective, very clean. And those who are really looking at it are saying, we just got to look at finding reasons to get things done rather than always blocking things like the development of, of new technologies that the government is standing away of. And I think that's one of the, the ugly little secrets out there is that I don't care if it's fuel efficient cars, if it's developing new fuel mixes, the government is really a major barrier on that, and we've got to understand that we all talk about a Manhattan project for the economy or for energy, when in fact um, the Manhattan project wouldn't be legal under federal law right now. We've got to go sort of change the way Washington thinks about our relationship with the private sector if we really want to see it ourselves get out of this, rather than always pointing fingers that the private sector isn't doing enough. Let's speak specifically about private sector jobs, because one of the issues that have frustrated me most about this current recovery package coming out of the administration is that very little of it speaks directly to the small business owners who create 70 percent of the jobs in this country. And you've got 27 million small business owners who would like to be able to keep people on their payroll, but when you see 611,000 private sector jobs lost last Friday, it's an indication of how tightly they're being squeezed. Are we doing enough to address the people who are creating the jobs? No, in fact, just the opposite. You're hearing the rhetoric that, you know, first of all, you have independent business people that are taxed twice on Social Security. They're taxed. They're punished for not being part of big labor or big business. Um, you know, we just sort of double whammy them because they don't have lobbyists in Washington to have things custom fitted for them. But we also have got to recognize that, that this is the energy uh, or the economic going to come from the small business, but when you hear the administration or anybody else talk about let's sock it to the rich guy and let's tax those that are at 500000 they fail to tell you that the overwhelming majority of those that are going to be hit are going to be small business. And, and then they'll go, oops, we didn't mean to do that. Because you don't have the small business represented before the Ways and Means Committee when these things come down. It's the little business guy who gets shafted on this. And I just wish those that were so upset at big business would understand that the real enemy of big business is not big government. That's an ally of big business. The real enemy of uh, big business is little business that's allowed to compete and bring big business under rein and keep it within uh, proper parameters. But the federal government and government overall tends to punish people for being little and entrepreneurial while they subsidize the big guy. Remember okay. the big line, too big to fail. How many times have you heard that in the last couple of months? Yeah, you know, uh, you mentioned labor at the very beginning. There's a sp specific labor issue going on in your state. The SEIU basically lobbied to the administration about these health care cuts that were being worked on with Governor Schwarzenegger um, and, and health care workers in the state who were going to take some cuts because the state is facing a real fiscal budget deficit. Um, 
it, it, it could result in the administration not giving $6.8 billion of the fiscal stimulus package to you guys. What's the backstory here and why the tit for tat? I tell you, this is outrageous. And as a former mayor and chairman of San Diego County, to have the administration um, basically try to um, extort a renegotiation of a contract with a labor union uh, just because we're trying to balance the budget back in California, something I wish that Washington was more serious about. But this was really an issue of probably, you know, follow the money. Was it $30 million that this union gave to the administration? And I think there are people in, in Washington who think that they owe the union um, everything and, and don't owe the people of California anything. And I think that this is one of those frustrations you have that this so-called stimulus package is not necessarily about helping as much as control. And I think this is a good example. If the, if the administration really wants to help the state of California, it will help and not obstruct the, the so, balancing so, of the budget. I mean, look, I mean, there's two things I want.